Hey, welcome back to the Rising Star Podcast. Before I get to our special guest with my friend Melissa today, I want to make sure that you're aware of a couple things, okay? We are going to pause uh, the book reading for a special interview. However, one thing I want to make sure you're aware of right out of the gate is the Ultimate Agent Contest, which is coming up really quick. If you have not registered for that, here's how it works, okay? As I literally have the landing, the, the registration page pulled up right now, okay? It says... I want to make you the next ultimate agent, the mansion, private jet, cash, and all the support you'll ever need, and I want to give it to you. It's got a whole video. You can register for free, but the way that's going to work is we're going to choose five agents that register, and we're going to take them on a private jet from Springfield, Missouri to an undisclosed location. We're going to live in a mansion for six total, five nights, six total days. I'm going to bring in five mentors to help the five agents, and we're going to have them compete every single day. And then whoever is crowned the ultimate agent will win $121,000 in total cash and prizes. And we're going to release it as our own YouTube TV series in the near future. We're going to tie it to 8%. Now you may say, Cody, I'm registered or I haven't registered. You can register at ultimateagentcontest.com. However, once you're registered, I want to make sure that there are two additional things you absolutely have to do. Number one, post a video on social media, hashtag ultimate agent, and tell us, my team and I, why we should select you as the next ultimate agent. Okay, that's the that's first thing you gotta do. Then I also wanna make sure that you go buy a ticket to 8% Nation 2022, which will get you extra entries in the contest. If you wanna get extra entries, you post a video to Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, which will get you an extra entry per platform. And or then you go and purchase your ticket to A Presentation 2022. For every VIP ticket that you purchase, you will get an extra four entries into the contest, which will drastically improve your chances of being selected as one of the five contestants. Okay, but also um, you can get a even more entries for Premier, Diamond, or Fire, or you can buy group tickets and get a whole bunch of entries. But I, I, but I want you to take this very seriously because we're getting close to the final selection time. The selection show, the contest selection show is april 13th that's a wednesday april 13th at five o'clock central standard time so make sure you get registered make sure you post your video make sure you get your ticket to help your chances of being selected because you know you're going to want to be there anyway and i'm about to release a massive crazy huge name very soon and i want to make sure that you are on the selection show as we're going to be not only letting the contestants know who the five people are but we're also going to be letting uh, we're also giving away a ton of prizes and tickets, other things that you can partake in. Okay, so this is one of the coolest things ever done. It's gonna be a massive, massive deal, super epic contest. It's gonna be, re- this con- this contest will be uh, viewed a lot, like literally, we're gonna have six videographers in a mansion, in a secret location, and then we're gonna televise this thing all over the world to insurance agents across the globe. And so it's gonna be a huge, really cool deal for anyone that's able to be a part of it and the five contestants, even though if you're not, even if you don't end up winning as a five contestants, just by registering, you will also get access to the YouTube series, which means that it's also additional phenomenal training. Like think of the best way for you to receive training and get better at selling insurance and be better at being a rising star. Well, it's, hey, watching someone do it live on video with me, a marketing uh, mentor, and then also several other insurance mentors as well that are live on site helping people win. We just dropped a massive, literally uh, a couple days ago, we dropped a massive direct mail uh, campaign around this secret undisclosed location. So we will have hundreds of leads, hundreds of leads for the contestants. We're going to make it. We're going to help them succeed. We're going to do everything we can to, to make sure that they are the ultimate agent. Okay, so go to ultimateagentcontest.com to register, and we will talk more about that soon. Also, going away from the ultimate agent now for a second, we are taking a break from reading the book, Zero to Six Figures. I read uh, um, the first four chapters of this so far. I've been reading uh, a chapter every week. For the most part, we have four more chapters coming up in the near future. But before we get to that, I will be, uh, before I get back to reading the book, I'm going to interview my friend Melissa, who was at the 8% Roadshow in Philly. Show up. You show up to go up, and then maybe you get to do some cool stuff with us, right? So she lives in Staten Island. I'm about to go to her. We're about to interview her live. Uh, but I want to make sure that you know about the Ultimate Agent Contest. 
want to make sure you know about uh, the book reading. Also, if you don't have the book, go, to, go on Amazon, Zero to Six Figures, grab it. We're recording the audiobook so that we can turn it into an audiobook so you can listen later. But I appreciate you being a rising star. I appreciate you listening to Rising Star. Also, uh, if you are not a part of Rising Star yet, it's an actual training program with live training calls. Go to risingstar.codyaskins.com. See you at the end of this episode. Today, I'm jumping in and interviewing Melissa Skur all the way from now. Help me out because you were at the Philly Roadshow, right? In Jersey. <laughs> what? Staten city? Island. We're in Staten Island right You're now. In Staten Island. I love it. <laughs> we Very don't, awesome. but it's okay. <laughs> all the way from Staten Island to Missouri to the world. Okay. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you being on today. Excited to spend some time with you and get to know your story. Uh, I would love for those Thank that don't know me. Melissa. Yeah, you're very welcome. For those that don't know Melissa, um, I would love for you to share a little bit about you. Where'd you grow up? You know, what do you got going on? How, how long have you been in the business? Just some okay. you know, more information about you. Yeah, absolutely. So honored to be here as a rising star. Even though I've been in for 18 years, I'm I'm still a rising star. <laughs> uh, but I'd love to unpack that a little bit. That's kind of how it goes. And, and, you know, the longer you stick with something, sometimes that makes it even better in the long run. Um, so my name is Melissa Skur. You got that right. I'm from St. Pete, Florida. So I was born and raised there, spent the majority of my life in, in that area. And then um, my husband's in the Coast Guard. So he um, was there. That was his first station on a boat um, there. And we met. Um, and then ever since then, we've you know not been in St. Pete. <laughs> About a year or two later, we dated for a while. We got married. And then it was at the end of tour so we've been hopping around quite a bit so um you know this is our seventh apartment in almost nine years of marriage <laughs> not all locations but you know we've been we've been to michigan we've been to maryland we've been to florida we were in key west which is really cool yeah um so the story of a military spouse is really like you know where are you from and it's interesting because we don't know anymore <laughs> yeah may or may not have any ties to our hometown just kind of making new roots all over. We were only been in the nation, but many military spouses are all over the world. So Yes. Well, thank him for his service and also your support of him and, 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 and traveling with him and all that. That's amazing. Um, really appreciate what he's doing there. So you've been, the, you said you've been the business 18 years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 37. You're 37, 18 years. Okay. So, so really when you're about 19, 20 years old. Yes. You've been in it ever since. Yes. If you had to give, and, and I mean, and we're oh, technically but back to what you said earlier, like we're all rising stars, by the way, right? Mm-hmm. Like we, we, we are all looking for the absolute most um, out of our own potential, right? As mm-hmm. you are too. And so if you had to look back over the 18 years in this industry, what would you say is the biggest thing that you've learned over that time between then and now? Yeah, oh my gosh, that's so tough <laughs> because there's so much. Um, yeah. The biggest thing I would say is I own my own agency as of four or five years now. And um, I would say, don't doubt yourself, you know, getting into the business. um, I always knew that I really wanted to be driven in sales. So my challenge getting into the business, which was primarily PNC up until 2011, when I worked for State Farm. So it's always independent in PNC. Um, I hopped around a lot. You could look at my LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, I can't apply for jobs anymore, really, because it's just too much of a story. And I've just realized I, I need to be self-employed. And that's fine. Um, you know, I also am not perfect in all of those, um, you know, exits. Uh, neither are the agency owners. So there's really a lot to learn from each experience. And I look back in my young adult life, you know, like, I wish I would have maybe handled some of those things different, but I also know that I stayed true to myself and true to my path um, and that there was no opportunity. So I had to keep finding it, you know, what I mean? yes. um, you know, a year, year and a half at, at each agency is not great. You look at that and I mean, if you're trying to be employable, that's terrible, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's a reason, you know, and, and there's sure. really, I'm so passionate about what you're doing with, you know, the podcast and just about every other channel by telling people, you know, that insurance is an opportunity because young people do need to know that, but they also need to be given an opportunity. And this isn't really like a millennial generation here. We're going to give it to you. You know, you need to work for it, but 
um, you know, it's it's really hard to find that actual opportunity. Yeah, yeah, it is. If you had to say, okay, here's what I'm good at when it comes to insurance. Like, what would you say you are good at? And then what, what would you say that you still need improvement in? If you had to answer those two areas. Okay. So what I'm really good at, I would say, is um, building rapport, you know, with clients over the phone. It's pretty much instant. I mean, objections are hard, but I'm, I'm um, doing better with that. So I'm um, getting back into more like high volume uh, sales and it depends on what kind of leads. But, you know, I can establish rapport pretty quickly. Um, I think I need to narrow that down and shorten the time frame that I'm actually talking to people about life. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm realizing my time is very limited, you know, as a mom who's busy, but then also, you know, if you want to help a lot of people, you want to sell more insurance, like you have to be able to narrow that down quicker without taking away the rapport yeah. um, and, you know, make sure your appointments are pretty regular. You're not just sitting there talking. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. It's so, hard. So, so, yeah, it is. So, so you think naturally one of the areas that you could improve is... And, and also, I can see those correlating, by the way. Like, I'm good with people, but I'm also sometimes too good with people yeah. because I can talk too much. I can overtalk. Mm -hmm. I can talk and, like, I don't accomplish anything. We, I build a relationship or a friendship. Right. But I, don't, I don't make any sales or it right. lasts too long and then I can't get to other stuff. Right. right. And so that's right. A, Yeah, I'm glad that you're bringing that up because I think a lot, there's a lot of agents that can learn from this specifically. Mm -hmm. right around the world that are going through this they're a rising star they believe in themselves we've all got areas we can improve right i mean i would say for me a few years back i was much worse at delegating than mm -hmm. i am today right i was a, and from a business standpoint uh that was a, f a natural flaw and i've still got a bunch but that was an obvious one right and so yeah it's cool that you're being open and sharing that and being honest and transparent about what you're going through because we yeah. all go through we all go through those things you know um what is something you're actively trying to do to improve talking too much in appointments? Is there anything you're doing? <laughs> I, I just did it today. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was really trying to recall it. Because I mean, I was on the phone for an hour. And at the same time, you know, I guess it really depends on what lead source and how, you know, are you maximizing that hour? Are you getting referrals out of that? Are you upselling? Are you uncovering, you know, the insurances of the entire family? <laughs> it's yeah. not necessarily bad to spend that much time. Uh, you know, it, it, those kind of policies are going to stay on the books. Also, you know, you really, really dive into the needs and the relationship. So it's not all bad, but like, not waiting for them to take a breath. <laughs> it's really difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, finding that right, right time to say, okay, like I really appreciate everything that we talked about. We got to get back to business. I think is what I had said to the ladies today. And it, it, it you know, work? it did and it didn't. And we did that a couple of times and then it we got back though? on track. You know, did it work? Um, did it work? Did it work? It did. Yeah. It did. You know, I had to actually get off the phone. <laughs> I had to get out the door, you know, at some point, but we, you know, we really uncovered a lot and, um, you know, it's just, um, that's just really tough because it's part of the business. It's part of building relationships. Um, and it, I guess it really just depends on what sort of lead source you're working and what your overall path is. Um, I do feel like I am, I am now, um, so my kids are almost three and one. So May, they're going to be three and one. And I've been part-time the entire time that I've started on my own. So now I'm trying to figure out, okay, can I even work leads? <laughs> you know, mm. What does that look like? And you're asking me what I'm doing right now. I mean, it's outside of that. It's like outsourcing. So delegating, do not be the control freak over every aspect of everything. Perfectionism will kill you. And I've learned that like, okay, I'm are, totally a perfectionist. <laughs> yeah. Are, are, are you naturally... I mean, as you just said, a perfectionist, like you, you want every detail to be really good before you take some action naturally. Cause there's a lot of personalities like that. Would you say that? Yeah. Would you say that defines you? I would say that. Yes. But I don't think it's ever held me from 
taking action completely. I'm also Good. a person who I love the books John Acuff. I read a couple of years ago, like start before you're ready. And that has just played in my mind so many times. You just start stuff yeah. and maybe that's unwise in ways, but you just got to do it. You have to take the action and, you know, do the best that you can. But I have learned to get to a point where, okay, like this needs to stop or be delegated or changed or, you know, pivoted um, that you did what you could there. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. So my website would be a great thing. I know how to, um, I know how to get in my website and, you know, kudos to Jeff Fruit and digital VGA, all yeah. those people. Um, you know, I would have never had the idea to go on my own if it wasn't for Jeff Fruit and that team mm -hmm. and the tech tools that they offer are just amazing. So should I be in my website? No, it's a huge time suck. <laughs> I haven't been in it really in years, you know, but I, I've spent so much time <laughs> yeah. in it. So, you know, I guess that would be an example. Um, there's a lot of things that can be a time suck. So you have to really just learn how to cut it off. There's certain things that you should really be the driver of, you know? So I think anybody who's self-employed or just knows that they're doing something in life that's important and they they are a perfectionist you have to fire yourself <laughs> you may have said something along those lines before you, you do like you have to just say okay well this is my role and somebody else has got to do these things yeah so that's right yeah i mean it makes sense too um what would you say are some of your like when you've had success during this time over the years, there's been certain moments where you've actually done, obviously done better than others with the times where you did well, what did you do differently? Um, and how did you get in front of people during those times? If you had to look. Yeah. Back? I will say that um, it may not be a popular opinion on, I don't know, sales front <laughs> for high volume sales. No, but um I can tie this back to something another producer said to me, you know, in a PNC office, you know, you explain things too much. That's why you're not making enough sales. Like, okay. I hear you on that because insurance really is confusing and you do need to keep it simple, stupid. Um, you know, so I'm really trying to find a, a good blend for that because there's so many customers that are, are referred to me because of the time that I take with, with them to explain things. Um, it may be the demographic that I'm after, you know, I mean, sure. it's a military, <laughs> so military spouses, military veterans, um, you know, they're not smarter than other people. They're still like regular people who don't understand mm -hmm. insurance, you know, but they need somebody to explain it to them. So um, they are a little bit more educated. They are used to kind of going through, you know, briefs or whatever. So, yeah. You know, it just really depends. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Are you on uh, the person that you're talking to, and I think it's um, really finding a balance of of what you're trying to go after. So I've had a lot of success because of that. I've had people in my niche tell me that they have changed their perception on insurance agents because of the way that I approach it. And it's really funny wow. because it's not anything special. I don't really think that it is all that special. It's just, I'm so curious on what other people do <laughs> you know, to sell sure. insurance because it's just helping people understand their options and educating them a little bit and um, not trying to push a product. I think yep. is the biggest thing. Yep. So is a lot of it, is a lot of it by referral to you? Yeah. Mostly? Yeah. So I, um, we moved, so I was 36 weeks pregnant and I had started my business, you know, very slowly, you know, the website buying leads and working term leads. And then I got pregnant Joe was on, you know, the end of the QS tours. So we didn't know where we were going until like two mm -hmm. months before we we're like, where are we going to have this baby? <laughs> what is life going to look like? And, um, unfortunately my mom passed away. It's kind of part of the hurdles that, um, you know, I've, I've overcome, she was tragically murdered. So it was a oh, huge, sorry. huge deal. Um, you know, that was 2018 and, um, being a new mom at the same time, there's just like so much going on. Um, so we relocate beginning of, you know, uh, 2019, here we are like new parents, new place. <laughs> yeah. And then a couple months later, I start getting like my ideal clients, all that like little busy work, all the foundation that you, you know, build online, like your presence kind of like, you know, you've been on YouTube since 2016 <laughs> That's right. and it just compiles, you know? Yes. 
So um, it's good point. just referrals. Yeah, that's a good point. It does. It, it's interesting how, I mean, you want to find success along the way because you don't have to wait, but man, it's right. so, so true. It does compile. Like there's some special stuff that happens by putting in the work consistently over the period of time for mm -hmm. years and years and years. And um, I just enjoy those clients because they are me, you know, most yep. of them are military spouses. I'm not the military member, but I understand, you know, a little bit of what their life is like just from being in that space and a little bit about, you know, my husband. And, um, it's just an enjoyable conversation. It gets addicting because you don't really want to work another lead source because it's completely different, yeah. you know, um, you but you know, the point with all that, all these leads or, you know, referrals just started building, um, in not really consistently either, right when I became a new parent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like why life? Why? You know? So, well, and you probably close a, you probably close a high percentage of those Oh, huge. Too. Like it's because... almost just about like almost all of them, you know, yeah. and I've I learned mean, you, when yeah. I don't, um, and I try to ask where'd you go? Why? You know, I don't always get the answer. And then I'm learning. There's a lot of just learning who this niche is a lot, you know, yeah. and you're not going to win them all. Um, but it's um, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, good. How, how many referrals would you say you get a month? So I will say that I it's I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but what I can tell you is mm -hmm. somewhat embarrassing. But I I wanted to do this podcast, um, you know, being vulnerable because what I appreciate about everything you're putting on YouTube is that it's all over the place. <laughs> you know, people are sharing their real stories. And what has enlightened me is that, um, you know, no matter how old somebody is, whether they're a guy or a girl, or what their circumstances are, there's a, a unique set of challenges that people are overcoming and have overcome in order mm -hmm. to be successful in this business. So it's pretty inspiring. Um, you know, and here in a rock, like I'm a mom, like, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this until whenever, you know what I mean? So yeah. I just feel like your YouTube channel, um, has helped me like snap out of that. So thanks. <laughs> Good. Thank it's you. Kind of like snap. I was like, what people talk about insurance on YouTube. Where was I? <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. I hope that I can give something back, you know, to anybody, you know, that's listening, um, running your own business is pretty difficult, but I've been able to generate around 30 to $40,000 in referrals. Some of those, like a little bit of paid leads, um, consistently over the past four years. And, um, it almost seems like I'm not trying, like I can't, I literally have not been able to be online or at my desk. <laughs> They're just coming. And so, that's not enough, but I'm proud of it. And I want yeah. to duplicate that triple it, quadruple it, you know, that's right. Um, there's definitely a way to do it. You know, I don't know if it'll be me or if someone else is going to figure it out by this podcast or whatever, you know, um, but it's just been really fun to learn. And I, I have a passion to be able to teach other military spouses. Sure. It'd be nice to add veterans to that mixture, but I really, care about the military spouses because they don't know about this as an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell too. It's really cool that you're doing that. Um, last question. If you had to give some advice, yeah. if you had to give some advice, advice to a brand new agent, they just came in the business. They're just, this is like their first video they ever watch and they're yeah. hanging out with Cody and <laughs> Melissa, right? What advice would you give as we wrap up today's podcast? I would say, um, get in the right mindset. You know, if, if somebody is thinking about an insurance career, um, they may or may not know that they're going to have to hear rejection and, um, you know, have the consistency. We we're kind of like, okay, yeah, we've heard that already we've experienced it. it goes through the ups and downs, but you know, somebody coming in new may not know that. Um, and so just being really confident in the fact that, um, no matter what somebody tells you about, being an insurance agent is a, you're a slime ball, <laughs> you know, I mean, they tell you that in the classes, like literally you're not perceived well by the outside market. You know, everybody thinks you're going to rip them off. Um, and you just have to kind of have that confidence that you're going to research, you know, your set of whatever products you're going to sell and just, um, you know, find your people and sell it with confidence. And if you do your best in one call, you got to go to the next one. 
you know, um, it's definitely a numbers game and you can't beat yourself up over what you didn't solve for that one person because it's not always your fault. Insurance yeah. is really confusing. There are a lot of options. It's very competitive. So it's, it's really not always your fault. Okay. You just have to learn, you know, from each conversation, um, figure out how you're going to, you know, structure your life and your time to stick with it. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Well, Melissa Skur, all the way from Staten Island. Thank you for being on the Rising Star podcast. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was cool to meet you and your hubby. Appreciate you being on this thing. Okay, if you I hope you enjoyed today's Rising Star I podcast. Did. I appreciate you being on. Appreciate y'all listening. And we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so, but how do you go from 30K to like this dude making a million bucks? You know, like that's strong. That's what clicked. So, you know, just... First off, I think a lot of people, when they start the insurance industry or they start working in the insurance industry, you know, yeah. they, they think it's to be a lot easier than it is, right? Because yes. everyone that's trying to get you.